What is up, Buckeye Nation? Flo Co here with Johnny Bullet, Ohio State football with Scarlet and Great right here on YouTube. Appreciate you all for tuning in. It's another edition before the game during hate week. Johnny, how is your hate this week? Well, I would tell you how I feel about the whole state of Michigan, but I am a Christian man. Um, <laughs> it 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 is it is as uh Every year I am happy to know that I still have this much hate in my heart. You go through the year and you're like, am I, am I different? Have I changed? Have I matured? And then this week rolls around and it's, I don't have to force it. It's as, it's chemical, it's phys, it's biology at this point. It's, Trust the science. It is, yes. It is as simple as. You know, your favorite meal releases dopamine in your brain. The week 13 of college football, the hate just starts creeping up. And I don't have to for it. It is, it is a, such a refreshing, compelling, natural, uh, organic hate. Uh, I'm just we so let it throw, flow through us like Palpatine mm -hmm. said in Star Wars. Uh, yes. I think that's his name anyway. I don't know. I just watched Star Wars. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I hate them more than ever since they became cheaters, Johnny. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I, I, there are I, probably a different show for a different day, but there are levels to why I think this is affecting the Michigan fan base to the layer that it is and mm -hmm. um, different levels that it impacts us because, you know, I, I, you just... You're like, ah, it makes sense now. It makes <laughs> sense now. And, you know, they were so moral. They can't accept this, Corey, because they know it's over. That if this is true, that all of it was crap. The moral mm -hmm. high ground crap. The we don't have to cheat. You're soft. We, if they lose this. There's nothing left to be said. You were as terrible as you always were. It it wasn't weird that Jim wasn't winning at the beginning. It was weird that he started winning at all. Mm -hmm. And you have to accept that. That you that, all right, I'll give you this quick snippet, Corey, in the mind uh -oh. of a Michigan fan. They last two years have finally fail validated that it was a farce it was a mirage all those years they couldn't beat ohio state in the program with the brady hoax and even all that that was the farce and jim not being that good was the farce that now it was just urban had some magic sauce but now they beat ohio state real bad last two years see i knew we were great i knew we were great they just got to that point now they're starting to see oh no we weren't. This was the farce, and what you were afraid was true about Jim Harbaugh three years ago, it was true all along. And worse, not only was he a bad coach, he was extremely unethical. Probably the most unethical coach that we've seen in a long time. No, Corey, you imagine that pain, that cope that they have to take just, to, I mean... 600 milligrams of unadulterated copium three times a day is what they're on right now. And that stuff's addictive. They got to be careful with that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like Oxycontin. It could become a drug and, and all of a sudden you're in the middle, you're in the corner you, of your room. You saw how mad they were addicted yourself. to it. Yes, you saw how bad they were addicted to it, Corey. Um, up until 2020. And mm -hmm. then in 2020, you could see them. They they accepted it. The cope wore off. Their adrenal glands were, were messed up. They had a, such a tolerance to it that it didn't help them anymore. And they were like, oh, no, Jim really can't do it. To, he can't do it. We're, we, you know, you see people kind of start waving the right white flag. He's not who I thought mm -hmm. he was. And... Then 2021, 2022 happened, and they got refreshed. Mm -hmm. So you, they're all back on the cope again. You're right. They'll, they'll get on it. So what you're saying be, is, oh, go ahead. Jimmy, they'll be arrogant and deny this for the next four years. 
Well, of course, but I mean, it, you're saying that Jimmy is actually a humanitarian because by cheating and giving them false hope, he actually got rehabbed them off of the copium for two years. <laughs> I mean, that's actually just that's just that's just you know like Nobel Prize worthy in my opinion. It, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. Sorry, a long winded way. No, no, it's, it's good. It's, it's eight it's week. Good. It just we, comes. It's so organic. It just comes out. We got three hours to fill here, so you're all good. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, going on to the game, we assume they're not stealing signals illegally. We assume that they, 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 you know what they did. We Chris Partridge just got fired for destroying evidence. I'm assuming they're destroying all the signals they stole. As in it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? We don't have any signals. They want Hillary Clinton on the signals and just destroyed them. <laughs> and uh, anyway. So we, they, let's just say the game's going to actually be fair. Well, Jim Harbaugh's not there. D- dude, Sharon can get his own coffee. He don't need Jim Harbaugh. We, we, Jim Har- we, we, it's a fair game this week, okay? Fair game this week. <laughs> Kyle McCord is at the front and center mind of the mindset of every Buckeye fan because everybody has what it seems to be a strong opinion of him, and it's not – He's okay. It's either he's pretty good or he's really bad. Um, what is Johnny? Let's start off with what he. What does he have to do? What What does Kyle McCord have to beat in order to win this game? Honestly, well, because <laughs> it, this is such a loaded question they get that it doesn't factor in. Well, what did the rest of the team do? Because they, they were some, all perfect. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. So you, you, he doesn't have to be that good if they're all going to be perfect. <laughs> I just tell you, <laughs> I mean, well, a field let's goal wins it. The, let's base if it on the, the deep median end, a play of the team from this year. I mean, they've. I think the defense yeah. has been really good. The offense has been up and down. Okay, you know, I think he's got to be Notre Dame Kyle McCord. He has got which to be, which Notre Dame Kyle McCord first half or last minute drive. You know, yeah, no. Well, I, I it's a culmination of it. He can, he can be a little up and down as long as the ups outweigh the downs, like Notre Dame. Fair I point. think you know, you no interceptions and your no downs is period, still no not fumbles. turning over. Yeah, you're not turning the ball over. So if that's his down, that we're still getting to punt because we just didn't move the chains too much. That's um, fine. And another thing, this game, this is going to be a Jim Tressel Lloyd Carr type of game mm-hmm. where. Uh, there's the field position like you in this game you almost have to celebrate a first down like it's a field goal almost it's wow. it, they're gonna be really important like Johnny bullet lowering the bar no on both on both sides on both sides um and that's just because the defenses are that good yeah. and the offenses leave a little to be desired so Kyle McCords he don't have to be you know I think he needs to be a little bit better than Minnesota Kyle McCord. I think uh, he can be. What if he's Michigan long- State Kyle McCord? What if he's that? Then if, they, the Michigan has no prayer. Then Michigan hmm. has no prayer. I'm not saying he'll should, he'll do that because, I mean, let's, they're a really good defense, you know. But he's faced two really good defenses, um, and that's Penn State and, and Notre Dame. And he did okay in them. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't too sharp. It was, certainly wasn't the worst. This is what Kai. This is what people misconstrue. Okay, you say, well, if he was C.J. Stroud, the team would be fine. Yes, assuming that the defense is still good mm-hmm. and that the offense is at least okay around him. Mm-hmm. Now, but we it, it is all dependent on the rest of the team because we did have C.J. Stroud twice, and he didn't win the game. Not because he was a bad quarterback, but because there were other factors in the game, like stealing, like stealing signs. Yeah, it was just some, it's like some of that, like poor defense. You know that kind of thing. That's not any fault of the quarterback. So th- this, what Kyle, I will say this: Kyle's got to be pretty good. He's got to be this guy that's you know top ten in QBR efficiency, kind of around there. He's been the best quarterback on the field every game he's played this season. Um, I mean, if now Drew Aller was definitely better. Yeah, yeah, Drew. Um, 
he, he I think he threw for more yards pretty much than anybody against um, Penn State. I think uh, Maryland had some garbage yards and just passed him, but um, he's through. You know, he has had like who diced us up the most out of anybody was Kyle McCord. If he can do that, Corey, the, this is he's just not. I don't think at this point in his career, good enough to turn something out of nothing and just uh, overcome and overpower bad mm-hmm. offense. That's what you love about a quarterback. There's times, you know, Aaron Rodgers was throwing to uh, guys in a few seasons. Uh, I remember the one season when there, you had a no-name tight end, and he was like the number one receiver, and it took him all the way to the NFC Championship game. Uh, Tom Brady's had plenty of years where you're like, geez, these these would not be all-star receivers. The, no, uh, the, the year they beat the Falcons, I couldn't name the receivers. I was, it's, they were in the Super Bowl, and I couldn't name I was like, who the heck is that guy? <laughs> Yeah, um, so that's that's awesome when you you know when the offense would be dead wrong and Braxton Miller would have two guys have him dead to right rights and he'd escape on third and eight and pick up twenty six. That's awesome when a quarterback can make everything wrong right. Kyle's not yet there yet. Honestly, I didn't see C.J. Stroud get there till the Notre Dame game, so game one of year two, because there were a few times. Uh, well, you can argue the Utah game that had some weird anomalies in it, but the game one against Notre Dame, the offense put him in really bad position a few times. He scrambled, escape, and made a few great plays, and it moved the chains enough to win. And it was crucial moments. Mm-hmm. We can't be getting in first and fifteens and second and twenties. We can't be doing the false starts a lot. We can't be doing the holding penalties. You can't let free rushers come on the blitz. Kyle's not going to lead you on three drives uh, from 385-yard drives that you made him get first downs twice um, because of penalties. He's not there yet, okay? Um, and don't let expect... free rushers come at him because he's not athletic enough to No, <laughs> and he's not yet. His, his ankles are pretty diminished, and he's, yeah. Yeah, don't let free rushers. Uh, that's a pretty good rule of thumb for any quarterback, actually. Um <laughs> You know, <laughs> just, so just, uh, let's just not do it yeah, at but all. If you're expecting Kyle, you said Kyle's going to be great. Yeah, meaning if the rest of the offense stinks, he does. But that's not, I mean, very few quarterbacks. Corey, are there any college well, quarterbacks right now where you were like, the offense around him can put him in pretty bad positions and he would still overcome it all? Caleb Williams. Okay. No, so you get, there's kidding. one. No, no, no. Yeah, either. I didn't want to. I mean, he has a lot of talent, so I don't, you know, but. You know, I mean, there's seven and five, dude. I mean, I don't care much talent he has. <laughs> well, he's, he, even he can't overcome a dreadful defense. Put it that way. Even That's he true. can't overcome a dreadful or defense. Or throwing three picks him. against Notre Dame. So. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> yeah, when he, when he couldn't be protected and he got pressured. And he start, see? Oh, again, protect your quarterback. <laughs> Bad things happen when you don't. So, I just, well, I think he's got to be a B a B I, guy, I a B plus guy. I could build off okay. that question. You're saying if the rest of the offense is bad, he has to be great. What is considered great for Kyle McCord? Uh, I'm not. Look, I'm going to go ahead and say it. CJ would. You could see him going and throwing for 430 yards and five touchdowns. He's just who he was. Dwayne, same thing. Uh, I can't. I'm never going to see. I don't see foresee Kyle ever doing it. Maybe ever doing it. Maybe maybe he'll have one game where it's like just an anomaly. But he's not going to be consistently who Kyle is. He's not going into this game throwing for 350 yards and five touchdowns. It's just not happening. I don't think so. Uh, no. So what is great for Kyle? Because I mean, what you and I would consider great for him is what a lot of the fan base considers a, to be a bum quarterback because they all play Madden and don't know what football is anymore. Mm-hmm. So what is great for Kyle? What is great for Kyle? Yeah. Um, if I, I mean the Michigan State game certainly, but like you said, he he could end up. Look, here you go, Corey. Maryland game. I'm pretty sure it was the Maryland game. He he seemed to really. I think with Maryland, he seemed to really struggle. First half. Yep. And he ended up with 285 yards, no picks, and like two touchdowns. And like sixty five percent completion yeah, percentage. Like the uh, Purdue game it took a while to get going. He mm. had like three hundred and twenty yards. 
So, and, and again, you might say, well, that's yards after catch. and da, da, da. I get it, yes. But you know about what am I quarterback to produce? If he produces those numbers, that means good things happen for the offense. Yeah. The key is, though, is there t- are there touchdowns? See, again, C.J. Stroud couldn't overcome a poor red zone offense outside of himself. wasn't all his fault. That's not what I'm saying. But, I mean, the Oregon game, C.J. Stroud, 488 yards. 488 yards. But they were all between the 20s. So, situationally, Kyle's mm-hmm. got to be good. He's going to be good in the red zone. He can have a Purdue-like performance. If he throws for 320, Corey, we win. Like, the only way he throws for over 300 we don't win is if we're, like, again, way down by way a ton. Be, and we're yeah, just, we're way behind or something, yeah. Yeah. They see, uh, this is the, the issue is with, our, with Ryan Day's offense, and it, even CJ had trouble with this sometimes, is when we play well against a too-high shell, which I imagine Michigan will, will throw a little bit out there, our offense, our passing game just stalls. Thankfully, what Trevion has done since he came back to uh, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin game is – offered that okay you want to go too high shell we'll run it right down your throat um and throw so, it short exactly that's kyle, you want to say what is if they play too high shell great for kyle is checking down he, yep. rutgers kyle check down and continue to get first downs don't turn the ball over because they're banking that you can't go 12 plays and score well when you show them yeah because i'm not afraid to take the super easy four yep. yard gain most quarterbacks don't like doing that cj hated doing it he got away with it because he could uh, get 40s all the time yeah because he <laughs> has other he has otherworldly powers with his passing it, uh, uh, yeah he could the ball placement and he had two left tackles that are stratospheres above these two left tackles and a better receiving core so um yeah i certainly going back to that it, it Kyle, kyle's checking down if he's checking down those are completions and when he's racking up completions, good things happen for this offense. No, I agree. Especially if you're getting caged over involved, you're taking pressure off Marvin, who's going to get, who's most certainly going to get bracketed, obviously. Uh, and Mecca, who's been coming back from injury, you get those checkdowns. Can and, and by the way, if you check down to Trevian Henderson, he could turn a five yard gain to a fifty yard gain really quickly. Exactly. Exactly. So, Please uh, throw quote unquote easy passes like this. The the scrape, the drag across the middle. Mm-hmm. I love that yeah. play. It's yeah, I, actually, a gainer. I had somebody come to me in the Rutgers game where they said, well, you know, Trevion did most of the work in the past game. So what's – I was like, it, but the quarterback got the ball in the hands of the playmaker. That's what their job is. If yeah. you're not a superstar Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes or whatever, then your job is to get the ball in the playmaker's hands and let them – if you're not the playmaker, which Kyle is not the playmaker in this offense – but if he gets the ball in the hands of the playmakers, then he's doing his job. Yes. And so you're what, what you're mad about at the end of the day is he's not generational like C.J. Yeah. Stroud or Dwayne Haskins or whatever. It's like, okay, guys, he may not be, but it's it's be happy that he knows where to go with the football. It's like, well, we also don't call a game plan like he's generational, like a bunch of reckless yeah. abandon. Let everybody go downfield. Four if verticals. Go. Yeah, and – He'll make something out of nothing, even if it's not there. We don't put him in those positions. We give him, you know, so like, <laughs> you want him to do force feed it down the field, like James Franklin when <laughs> tell that I, reporter, throw it deep, no matter what. Yeah, just no matter what, just throw it deep. <laughs> no, never, never would I ever. As a few times, James Franklin actually was dead on and correct about something. He's like, I don't understand what you're saying right now. You want me to just throw <laughs> he it deep? Does. He's like, dude, my brain's going to explode. What do you mean? Set <laughs> hut and no matter what? <laughs> like, freaking never, dude. We got ever. three safeties we back there. Yeah, just throw it deep. Who cares? Just take a shot. <laughs> I'm launching it. I think fans take that a little too, that cliche a little too seriously. When they say, just take a shot deep. Like, well, if it's not open. <laughs> He's got two guys on him. It's like it's gonna be a pick, <laughs> you know. So no, don't do that. Uh, he cannot be throwing picks unless it's he fourth cannot. down and it's like fourth and twenty. Marvin goes deep. He's got two guys on him. We'll just give him a shot. Throw it deep, you know. <laughs> then then you do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. But in in the grand scheme of things, no, you know, you don't. So I I think I I agree with you. Great to me. No turnovers. 
game manager gets the ball in the hands of the playmakers like Emeka, Marvin, and uh, Trevian, especially Cade, sprinkle Cade in there a little bit. And then he's he ends up being 24 of like 36 for uh you know 280 yards and two touchdowns. I'm like, well, how what can you complain about at that point? Two, I mean, 280, I've had, 280 on this defense. It's good. Very, very good. <laughs> With two two new tackles, a new center. Um and you know, you may have some drops here and there. Like you will. That's, there's there's that's, just be real. They're gonna have two, three drops. It's it's, it's not gonna be great weather. Yeah. Um I mean like if you get 280 out of that, a great defense in the cold. Hmm. I mean, it, got to got to cool. be pretty happy with that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And then, and if Trevian's able to put up a, a you know, a, you know, a buck 50 or something like that in the run game on top of all of it, it's like, okay, your offense had a great day. My goodness. Um it's yeah, going to be one of those this cool, it, it it's that's this is where people you're temper you're doing it right. You're saying 280, I can't 280 and two touchdowns no inter, no turnovers. I, you're like, you're saying, I, I'm tempering my expectations. If he throws 65, 68% and does all that, I'm cool. Like, that's yep. a great game against this defense. Again. On the road? Yeah. on the, Yes. And, and, Corey, that goes back to what we say going into preseason that people say, oh, I expect there to be some struggles. But then when they see the struggles, they get upset. Yeah. If I told you going into the mission game, Corey, He'd throw. He'd have twenty eight hundred ninety, pretty much twenty nine hundred yards, twenty two touchdowns, four interceptions, and was undefeated. You You would say solid QB. (laughs) You would say, sign me up, coach. Yep. Then a lot of the fans got signed up for it, and they got mad about it. (laughs) Like because he threw a couple picks against Wisconsin, and uh, think about that. that touchdown to interception ratio, Corey, is Aaron Rodgers like? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I'm not. Don't get me wrong; he's not anywhere not, a, near Aaron you're, Rodgers. Johnny Bull right now is saying Kyle is Aaron Rodgers, dude. Come on, get, get, you, you're going a little over the top now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I agree with you. It's a five to one ratio. It's like stop griping. I mean, that's because he, when he threw two, oh, he's regressing. He's terrible. I think it's funny how many people told me he's going to cost us about three games this year. I'm like, well, we're but that's the other. Yeah. 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 He's nine to three. Know. He can't be – he's got to be developed by – I kept being told he's got to be pretty developed by the Notre Dame game. He's got to be developed. Ooh, he's got to be better by Penn State. Oh, oh, it'll be that team up north. Like, I'm, I'm – you know, and not, here's the thing about him, though. He's not flashy. Sometimes it's not pretty. But, man, he's just getting the job done. You Ultimately, know? yeah. I, that, so here's the thing about him, with him in Michigan. Say he goes for, like – 14 of like 27, 180 yards and a touchdown. But that last touchdown is a game winning touchdown. It's like, yeah, it was kind of ugly there, but it's a good defense on the road and he just won the game. I mean, what do you. I don't think that's that unlikely, actually, what you just said. I think it's very possible. Yeah. (laughs) And that's when you go like, he's a lot better than Craig Krenzel, but he gives me some Krenzel vibes. Yes. <laughs> because of that, you know, yes. he, he's a lot better passer than JT, but he gives me some JT vibes. Yes. You know, uh, that's, that's what would be the Notre Dame version. I think. Yeah. Just about, uh, Craig made me look yeah. bad so many times because he, he would be Because you were like, I'm done with him. I am He's done with him. He's terrible the whole game, and then all of a sudden he throws a holy Buckeye touchdown pass, which is a beautiful freaking pass and one of the most beautiful passes in Ohio State history. And I'm like, of course he did. <laughs> it's just like he we couldn't move the ball against Purdue the whole yeah, game. I told, I told a lit- living room full of people how he's the worst player I've ever seen. <laughs> and he <laughs> goes and does that. It's I know like, your style. I'm, it's like I'm glad he's. I'm glad we won, but that guy makes me want to puke the entire game. <laughs> I'm glad Twitter wasn't around back then, or you would have been in his DMs. Oh, I would. I would have threatened it's, him all the time. All the time. Like you, you, if you can't throw a five yard out by now, dude, you're like you're like 32 years old in college. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh. So. Well, you got the fourth and 14. Yeah, Michael Jenkins for some <laughs> ungodly reason was wide open. <laughs> It made no sense. <laughs> Tim Tressel, the gambling man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're Purdue's coach and Jim Tressel's the coach, you're like, load the box. Yeah. Honestly, I, mean, they I don't did, want I any. They, they I'd, be, I'd been like, 
<laughs> Honestly, I don't even want any corners out there. <laughs> Well, so, well, Coach Michael Jenkins is out. Yeah, I don't care. They ain't, they ain't I, it's Jim Tressel in his fourth and one. <laughs> they got Maurice Claret, who's barely barely able to walk, so they, they're clearly going to hell. <laughs> Urban would have ran him. <laughs> Urban would have run Craig Ransom because he was actually somewhat of a decent athlete. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, Johnny. I think we spent enough time on this topic. Um, what, what's, your final, what's your final score prediction for this one? Uh, I like the Buckeyes 27-20. I like the Buckeyes 27-20. I said 27-17. We're like right on the same page there. That's, yeah. Yeah, both the college football nerds picked us and had similar kind of spreads as we did. So, um, so great. We're going to lose now. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. As long as Lee Corson don't pick us. <laughs> no, oh, please, Lee, Lee. Put him in the home. Stay oh, home, shit. dude. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a little cold, but yeah. <laughs> Let him go home and be with his family. That's what I should be. That's, yeah. it. That, that, that's what I should say. Honestly, I do feel bad for him. It's almost like elder abuse at this point. Like, God. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like and, that. And honestly, I, Lee is a legend in game day. I mean, yeah, he, he shouldn't be remembered like this, you know. No, it's like, like Dick Clark in the last couple of years of New Year's. It's like, dude, it's over. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's bad. <laughs> it's yes. Yeah, it's 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 like we and we're not knocking them. It's just time catches up with everyone. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I've heard Zach Smith's going to retire in a few years because he's afraid of the dementia setting in soon. I know Steve Deese already did retire. He didn't <laughs> he said to, Steve is freaking Steve. You can't make fun of him. Biden's incompetence nope. anymore in your show. <laughs> you, Steve, you're making, leading you. You're making you're leading Biden you to look the like bathroom a right now, man. It's, <laughs> it's a psyop. <laughs> it's a psyop. It's all a psyop. Uh, Kyle McCord, ultimate psyop, as he's going to come out and throw for 600 yards and six touchdowns. Hey, Kyle McCord is a psyop. He, put, he, he puts you to sleep in the first half, and then he's like, all right, now I got you where you want. I want you to quit playing. <laughs> you know, you, you, you started loading the box. Now I got my one-on-ones. It's like, oh, now you think we're going to run the ball after I couldn't pass the ball? Okay, mm -hmm. that's a weird strategy, but okay, let's do it. <laughs> it's like Kate Stover, key to the game. Kate Stover, if he gets targets early, they have to – Adjust, start adjusting to him, Trey and Marv. And I'm calling it right now. Off. Carnell Tate has his best game as a Buckeye. Chris Olave, circa 2018. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I like your style, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you send us out, man. Ah, oh, appreciate everybody out there except for Dylan Freeman who made a mockery of our group chat <laughs> and said something really stupid about who would have a great game. So God bless everyone else, goodbye, and go Bucks.